coming up, the applied physics of three-cylinder engines, an apology to the Volkswagen Amarok, and a bunch of big, swinging, sweaty nuts. Just another day in the auto expert office, really. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Two quick updates and then we'll be busting some fresh nuts. Yes. Would you care to comment briefly on the three cylinders that seem to be used in smaller cars these days? Okay, so I got rather a lot of this during Engine Nerd Month, which is rapidly drawing to a close. An inline three is what you get when you take a radial arm drop saw to an inline six. You lop it in half, plug up the holes, hope for the best. Frankly, there are some things to like about them in engineering terms. There are three crank pins 120 degrees apart, so there's evenly spaced exhaust pulsing, right? And a three into one exhaust manifold is going to give you excellent scavenging right off the bat, which is important if you want even filling and combustion in every cylinder and you do want that. So there's even firing and perfect phase balance on the reciprocating masses, but they have a lot of planar imbalance effects, and that means they need heavy counterweights, unless of course you want to drive down the road on a rolling vibrator, which could be okay, depending on the mood you're in, of course. Three cylinders is a complete good news, bad news story. They have excellent secondary imbalance properties as well, so they're smoother than an inline four at high revs, but the big counterweights mean that it's virtually impossible to make them sporty, which is why they're so popular in the cars that are designed for men who have had their wedding vegetables removed surgically, often by an outraged ex-wife with a rusty teaspoon. Also good for the ex-wife with said rusty teaspoon and a certain vengeful gleam in her eye. You know the cars I mean. Nasty, spiteful, bite-sized chunks of excrement like the Audi A3 1 litre. Zero sex appeal with four wheels and half a real engine. Yes. The biggest problem with three-cylinder engines is 240 degrees of crank rotation between the firing pulses. Firing lasts about 120 degrees, so you get a push on the crank for 120 degrees and then deafening silence for the next 120 degrees, repeat for eternity. Thus, in the domain of turning versus burning, three cylinders, at least the four-stroke ones, are only ever going to deliver 50% of the time, which is why their natural habitat is the cheap, shitty econo box. Putting a three-cylinder engine in a car is a decision only an accountant could ever really ratify. It just says it all, really. <laughs> There has, of course, been an outpouring of indignation like this coming up in respect of my inline five cylinder report. Amarok V6, not inline six. Also, according to VW spec sheet, the V6 produces 165 kilowatts peak power from 2,500 to 4,500 revs, not just at 4,500 as John quotes. So the argument that it has to spin harder to produce its peak power is Incorrect. The Amarok is definitely a V6. My bad, and I apologise to you without reservation for incorrectly referring to it as an inline 6. It's definitely a V6, and hopefully I will get away with crucifixion for a first offence. I get my engine data from redbook.com.au because it's a one-stop shop database for every model, new and used, ever sold here in Shitsville. And the specs are presented in a kind of consistent way that makes comparisons between vehicles and models very quick and efficient. Redbook is actually pretty good most times, but in this case they were certainly wrong, and therefore so was I. According to Redbook, Amarok is an inline six, and I've let them know. Alan's statement about power in the Volkswagen Amarok V6 is accurate too. That is certainly what they claim in the PDF brochure about the peak power of 165 kilowatts being available from 2,500 revs to 4,500 revs. However, I would humbly submit to you that it appears to me Volkswagen are lying sacks of excrement on this because that's not physically possible. 
Here's what they say. The problem here is that those two specifications are mutually exclusive. You cannot have both simply because physics. Kilowatts equals Newton meters times revs divided by 9,549 in the metric universe at least here in Schittsville. Therefore, you cannot make simultaneously 165 kilowatts and 550 Newton meters at 2,500 revs. That's just indefensible bullshit. The Volkswagen brochure might be better than Isaac Newton at physics, but I kind of doubt that. For any engine to make 165 kilowatts at 2,500 revs, it needs to deliver 630 Newton meters of torque at that point. Unlikely. It's far more likely that it's 550 Newton meters at 2,500 revs, as claimed, making the power output 143 kilowatts at 2,500. Either way, the specs are just another brick in the wall of indefensibly inaccurate Volkswagen bullshit. I'm sure they'll have a suitably spin-laden bullshit justification to go along with it. First of all, you had every chance not to have to deal with the most poisonous critters this world has to offer. You stayed, I think he means in Australia, I think your Stan comments regarding the US don't really come from a position of strength, but rather rank envy. Goodness me, I think he's talking about our fine nation, Ask trailer. It pains me to point out to you that my comments on Retardistan are satirical. I'm non-discriminatory. I mean, I routinely call my own domicile here, Shitsville. As to envy, I would rather bathe in a hot tub full of death adders and drink a schooner of live funnel web spiders for breakfast every day than call that imbecile Trump my commander in chief. I really don't wish to live in a country where you need a prescription for the most basic of painkillers, but you can go out and buy an AR-15 over the counter at Kmart to protect you and your friends Cletus and Jim Bob from the gangbangers who just moved in across the street in Watts or Newton, where half of the allegedly educated population thinks that evolution or climate change are, quote, just theories. I'd rather live in a civilised land if it's all the same to you. The song called Ethel was about alcohol. Ethel alcohol. Really? Quote, <laughs> One thing, no lie. Ethel's frigid as an Eskimo pie. She's cool in bed. Well, she ought to be, cause Ethel's dead. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like alcohol. Meanwhile, collapsing the waveform back in this universe, a 1970s social justice warrior named Anne Landers called Alice Cooper out in her nationally syndicated advice column over his infamous necrophilia song, claiming it was unsuitable for children. I don't know why. <laughs> Alice Cooper hit back on December the 3rd, 1979. I'm really sorry you found that old song of mine crude and offensive. Actually, Cold Ethel is just a harmless number about necrophilia. The point I want to make is that kids are not bothered by this. Their parents are. The kids see the song and gruesome antics, like with the guillotine, for exactly what it is. Satire, done with a sense of humour to a rock and roll beat. Kids know I am harmless. It's their parents that make me out to be some kind of monster. Therefore, on the balance of probabilities, Cold Ethel is really just a harmless song from the 1970s about a boy getting it on with his decapitated girlfriend on a slab in the morgue. But at least they're not drinking. The committee you do isn't funny, matey. Stick to car and the device. Well, I suppose you'd know because you are pretty funny. <laughs> so many jokes crammed into just 11 words. I can't hope to compete with that. This guy has a PhD in sarcasm and a master's in comedic... 
timing. Brilliant. You two dudes, just sort this out, could you? (laughs) This determination is well above my pay grade. But I will tell you one thing. You certainly cannot hope to please all of the people all of the time. That's what the comments feed tells me. The innuendo in this is so prepucent, I can't get into it. Two points on this, Gracie May 74. First, this is why I remain so sceptical whenever education authorities allege to me that literacy rates are rising. It seems to me that more people than ever before are actually being left behind. Number two, to your point, I kind of agree. There's nothing I hate more than prepucent enwando. This is by far the worst ever flavour of enwando. It's like strawberry and sardine conserve. (laughs) Anchovy infused coffee. Nobody deserves that. I'm John Cadogan. To your parents, Mr and Mrs Gracie May 74, I would say retrospectively, I'm sure we all agree now that it was a bad idea for brothers and sisters to marry and breed. The jury has returned on that, I think you'll find. Take care of Gracie May Jr. though. It's not his fault. He's a good kid and he's got heart. And sometimes that's all it takes. Just keep him away from the keyboard because it's not helping. Thanks for watching.